Hi guys, welcome to the recap of what happened on day 6 on the Cycroft Blitz server. So let's start by checking out the concrete factory I talked about yesterday already. It's finished by now, we'll run it in a moment, but let's first actually check out the obsidian mining setup we got here. So we got a lot of people's second account in there, Masa, second account, Visa Foxes, second account, Process, Cadenda, and Masa actually has a third account, we also used that one. Okay, so one of the limitations was on the Blitz server that we only use bots of whitelisted players. Okay, so we got yeah, the mining um, all of 25 obsidian blocks here actually. Um, we made a little bit of a mistake in the progression. We should have actually tried to set up a wizard based obsidian mining setup straight away. But now that we got the whole concrete factory around, we're kind of scared that if we would build yeah, wizard based design now, it would des uh, destroy parts of the concrete factory. So that's why we decided to do the normal obsidian mining. But yeah. Would have been better if you would have tried to do something with the wizard first. Anyway, this is still quite efficient. Yesterday I actually planned to only have four bots in there, then process added a fifth one, and now they're actually faster than the system can handle. So we're getting a little bit more than 9,000 obsidian power this way. Just pretty good. If you run this the whole day, you definitely get over 200,000 obsidian, which is already plenty. So we can build a lot of nether portals this way. Um, this has been running for a couple hours. You can already show some of the progress. We got almost I mean, 45k obsidian already. Definitely the plan is to run this a bit more until we get yeah like 200k to so run this for a full day approximately. Okay, um, one, thing, one more thing that's noteworthy is the cobble that comes in. Um, this is the setup in the overworld dimension. I can quickly show that regenerates the end platform. So we just got a hopper clock timer. That was designed by ESO. And I'm actually at spawn. Oh, I quickly have to actually set my spawn at the end portal. So there we go, set my spawn point right next to the end portal. So we just have a clock here at the top. That is, that activates a dropper and yeah, shoots an item through the end portal. Hope we can see that real quick. There we go. And this always regenerates the platform. Okay, and of course we got a chunk loading system. Um, in order to keep the overworld side loaded. In order to run this setup 24-7, we also have to worry about pickaxe durability. Eventually, after about three or three and a half hours, the diamond pickaxe with unbreaking three would break and then yeah, we would, would either need to repair it with mending, or actually before that, or just give them a new pickaxe. I think just yeah, giving them or offering them a new pickaxe is the easiest solution. So I bought some efficiency 5 unbreaking 3 pickaxes from the villagers. But actually we have an unbreaking 3 pickaxe toolsmith and I just had to put efficiency 5 on it. Which isn't too much effort. So yeah, we cycled them in a water stream behind all the AFK accounts. And yeah, they would pick up the new pickaxe as soon as they would run out. So I think there's hardly any chance that somebody would pick up a different item. The hoppers below would pick up the obsidian quickly enough. But actually, now that I think about it, um, it might be best if you work on a system to deal with yeah, all the obsidian items that are incoming. Otherwise, if all the hoppers would back up, then sooner or later, some of those players would pick up an obsidian and then they couldn't place it again. Okay, so I actually need to put in some work and try to dispense more items. At the moment, all the obsidian is actually just yeah, getting dispensed into a water stream and all the hoppers um, link to that dropper. And then they're sent through the yeah, item streams and elevators to the shiker box loader. I've been told this was designed by C5, by the way. Okay. Um, yeah, okay. If I maybe rearrange the hopper somehow so the <laughs> dropper can receive items from two sides and this should already fix the problem. Okay, that's something I'm gonna do after the recording. I briefly thought about an even fancier solution for the durability problem. We might even add some XP system to repair the pickaxes. So we could maybe build an overworld portal-based zombified picklin XP farm. 
and then just send the XP boss through the end portal. They would also end up here. If you maybe give the XP boss a little bit of momentum so they shot towards the players, it would even help a bit more. And then, yeah, they could actually repair the pickaxes this way. Let's see if we're gonna add that. We only have a whole month. Let's also check out the concrete factory now. So we're duping concrete powder at the moment. The, yeah, concrete powder has a bit of momentum, so it gets shot out to the side in the end dimension. Okay. So it would land up over here, but then drop down and progress goes to spectator mode again. And then get shot um, by slime blocks to a yeah, water column where the concrete powder converts into concrete. That is yeah, still the same principle since 1.12, or whenever this was uh, made possible. So we just have a pack of six concrete powder in one block, and if you shoot it up a water column, one after the other turns into concrete. It's one of the most satisfying things to watch in Minecraft. Okay, now we got the concrete blocks, just gotta break them, get them into item form. And so that's why we got the yeah, TNT duping set up here at the top. And again, item collection here at the bottom. Um, not entirely sure why we put everything into hoppers right here and then dispense it again. We put into the bubble elevator. Gotta be a reason. <laughs> I'm just not seeing right now. But anyway, um, yeah, items would go up here and here we got the huge um, yeah, filter system for all the concrete colors and storage system. Okay. So we still haven't assigned really all the colors. I think this is actually the first time we're making yellow concrete. Gotta actually search for it. Oh wait, this is the first time uh, the shulker boxes are still getting filled up. All right, so eventually we definitely wanna run this with all the colors. So we have a lot more building options, even if it's for a whole months. What's actually really nice right now is that the speed of the concrete duper isn't high enough that the platform would regenerate before the accounts here are able to mine the first block. So the obsidian farm is actually still working um, while the concrete tube is also running. So we only mine single obsidian block here. So technically, if I would rearrange this somehow, we could even put like 10 accounts in here or even more. Uh, technically, you could probably have 25 accounts where everyone mines one obsidian block. But I think this is enough for now. It's raining right now, which is actually pretty good. Um, I should actually rush over and show the other farm that relies on rain. Let's do that real quick. So there we go. We actually need the rain, or in this case, snow for the new powder snow farm. So since we have the new iron farm, it's also now feasible to build a yeah, contraption like this one here that needs a bit over a thousand cauldrons and also hoppers. It is actually an AFKable powder snow farm. My second account is right now going through the system with a bucket in his hand, clearing all of those cauldrons or so checking if yeah, some powder snow fell in there. Unfortunately, this powder snow process is rather slow. Should actually yeah, pick up one here. Uh, and this just takes forever to get a reasonable amount. Um, also, people always sleep on the server, which resets the weather. So it's actually quite rare that it actually snows. So I'm happy that we actually, actually see the farm running. Pretty lucky here. Okay, um, so I fill up the whole inventory of my second account with iron nuggets. And in one, or the, the hand slot, we got the buckets. Um, obviously, at some point, you would run off the buckets. So every time, basically, you fill a bucket of powder snow, it drops it out of the inventory. And that's why we got so many hoppers below. Which, by the way, are actually not causing a lot of lag. Um, it's a bit over a thousand hoppers, it's pretty much negligible. There's a village nearby, all of those villages that are inside and the mobs around it, they cause way more lag than all of those hoppers. So yeah, it's really not necessary um, to completely not use any hoppers. Of course, a hopper minecart setup might be a little bit better in this case, but yeah, those hoppers won't kill the server. All right, so in case you could actually run out of buckets or replenish it, um, eventually he would make his way through the system and end up here where we got a little dropper system that gets activated exactly 16 times and shoots 
the buckets on top of this hopper here. And then the player would pick those up, comes nearby, activates the detector rail for a brief moment, depowers the hopper, which would then pick up the remaining buckets. Okay, it's almost at the end. There's another system, so in case he would actually use up all the buckets and end up with some powder snow in his hand. Uh, we also clear that, because otherwise he couldn't pick up the other empty buckets. So there's a spot here. If you hold down right mouse button, he would just place the powder snow against the block here, which observer would detect and trigger a dispenser that is also completely filled. So that powder snow would then also be dropped on top of the hoppers. Okay, any moment he arrives, but I don't think, yeah, the bucket isn't really filled. So still got empty ones. Just waiting for him to, yeah, pass the detector rail. Here comes. Actually, it's the dropping system. Here you go. Comes nearby, picks up some buckets, and then the rest is put into the hopper. Okay, no, <laughs> goes through the whole system again, and it already stopped snowing, unfortunately. Um, yeah, just, <laughs> people always sleep and reset the weather. It just takes forever to get a good amount. That's all we got so far, and I think this has been running for yeah, pretty much 24 hours by now. Very disappointing. So we got mm, not even 300 powder snow buckets. Enemy was playing on the server yesterday as well, apart from mining, he was also placing down some blocks. I think he's missing our 1.12 server a little bit, because he placed down a layer of white concrete and then a layer of ice on top. So pretty much the same that we got on our 1.12 server. At spawn we have a layer of iron blocks and a layer of ice on top to make it spawn proof back then. And yeah, basically prevent any yeah, animal spawning. So enemy the same here. Hope he feels a bit more at home now. Okay, there will also be some digging. Um, we plan to build a maximum... Or not really maximum. Uh, we want to build a huge cactus farm from bedrock to sky limit. And this will be roughly the area. So enemy is probably gonna dig this out. And then we also gonna start building a huge cactus farm. Uh, there's a reason for that we want to... Um, yeah, I have a good source of immediately available XP. So there will be a furnace array as well, smelting all the cactus. Then whenever we need to repair a mending tool, we can come here. Instead of having to go to the end dimension right now, hoping that no other players is online in the end dimension uh, for the yeah, XP phone to work properly. So this will probably be our yeah, setup to repair our tools real quick. And of course a huge cactus farm, because why not? Uh, cactus is the best, because for smelting one cactus you get one XP. For example, smelting stone only gives you a tenth of um, an XP point. So, yeah, cactus is by far the best item to smelt. That's why we're building the cactus farm. Such a huge one. Alright, then one more thing I can show. I was actually grabbing some bone meal from the moss farm earlier. Methods built a little... Yeah, fungus farm based on bone milling nylium in order to get some of those nether plants. Was it a sign I made at some point? Basically, just a shifting floor design, nothing fancy. After a while, there's also a clock here attached on the side. Um, the shifting stops. Water on the side. Um, yeah, it's put into the farm by opening, there we go, by opening the trapdoors, items drop down, and then we can pick them up on the side here. And then the farm starts up again. Okay, so simple stuff. No item collection here at the moment. I think Mephos just needed a little bit of fungus. Um, warp fungus, actually, he wanted to make a better Hawkland farm, but actually he scratched the plans. Because the early game Hawkland farm supplies us with enough food. You can also switch the nylon by pushing in the other blocks, but it's actually a little bit overcomplicated. So I made this design here during the snapshots once. It's still working, but you could actually have the other type of nylon right next to it. Um, it wouldn't be detrimental at all or create a different type of fungus on top. So it would be enough to just push over one block. Um, but yeah, it's just a little bit overcomplicated. Doesn't matter. 
Seems like Methods likes working with villagers. I'm really glad because I hate it. So he's still expanding our yeah, villagers setup at the main island. Uh, I think at the moment he's trying to get the rest of the enchantments we don't have books for. And he's also trying to get a really good pickaxe by default. So earlier I actually got an uh, Unbreaking 3 pickaxe trade from the toolsmith. But it could actually have Unbreaking 3, Silk Touch 1, and Efficiency 3, which for example is enough to mine or instant mine ice. So I think he's also yeah, gonna go for a little bit of a better villager. But now we also got a better villager breeder. So we got pairs of villagers here in the holding cells, additional beds here on the side for the babies. Um, what we still need would be an automatic food supply. So we're thinking about adding a potato farm on top of the whole setup here. All right, that's it for today. I'll get ready for streaming now. At the time this video releases, I'll be over at Twitch streaming day seven. Thanks guys for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.